November 4, 1982, 38 years today since President Ahmadu Aijo announced his resignation and handed over power to his constitutional successor, Paul Beer. The Civil Thunder News tonight relives a historic moment in the country's life. The mayor of Yaoundé 7, Augustin Tamba, wins the coveted position of president of the United Councils and Cities of Cameroon. He beats his competitor, Abuba Karabo, 198 votes to 165 at an elective session. Americans await the results of the 2020 presidential election. Donald Trump and Joe Biden on the race too close to call as the outcome of voting in swing states is on course. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Those are the headlines of the 7.30 News. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. to November 4, 2020. It is exactly 38 years since Cameroon's first head of state, Amadou Aijo, voluntarily relinquished power in favor of his constitutional successor, Paul Beer. Two days later, President Paul Beer acceded to the helm of the state in perfect legality and in accordance with the Constitution. Chief Unity Palace correspondent Ashun Yenti provides a real even of the historic moment. <laughs> The event happened 38 years ago, but its remembrance still gives goose pimples as if it were only yesterday. At 8 p.m. on this November 4, 1982, the political quietude of Yaoundé just blew out like a candle in the wind, shattered by an unexpected announcement that sounded like a thunderbolt. Cameroonese. Camerounais, mes chers compatriotes, j'ai décidé de démissionner de mes fonctions de président de la République unie du Cameroun. Cameroun's first president, Amadou Aïdjo, took the nation by storm, suddenly announcing his resignation from the office and his desire to transfer power to Paul Biawumi, described as his constitutional successor. The population was stupefied, panic stricken and feared for the worst. This was partly because the name Aijo had become synonymous to Cameroon and many hardly conceived the existence of the country without him. This uncertainty could also be explained by the relatively limited knowledge about the incoming president, Paul Beer, whose modesty and discretion had shielded him away from the public eye. Le journal démarre à 20h22. This man, Jean-Claude Otto, was a journalist who presented the LPM newscast on radio in which the president's resignation was announced. We were kind of worried, he says. Our ties were not properly knotted. Our shirts were rumpled. It was an atmosphere of excitement in the newsroom. First, stupefaction, excitement, stress, and for us, we were proud to have a feeling that we were about to make history. But these initial misgivings soon melted into emotional attachment and fascination when the man who was clearly à la mode made his first contact with the public. That Saturday morning, not in the habitual gandura Cameroonians had become used to, but in a customized six-piece suit. It was a veritable histoire d'amour, showcased in the popular clamor that accompanied the new president from the National Assembly to the Unity Palace. It is at that point that the Bia charm and charisma started becoming a phenomenon. The transfer of political power itself was clean in respect of Republican legality and constitutional exigencies. Very quickly, Paul Bia rolled out what was to be his political mantra, standing on five pillars, rigor, 
moralization, democracy, social justice, and diplomatic outreach. Since then, with his hands steadily on the rod of the ship of state, Paul Bia has continued to steer Cameroon onto safer shores. And on the extreme destructions of the head of state, President Paul Bia, Prime Minister Joseph Jengute has arrived in the southwest region where he is expected to personally represent Paul Bia at the official burial ceremony of the seven school children murdered last October 24 in Kumba. He was received upon arrival today by Southwest Governor Bernard Okalia Bilai. Christian Chiatam reports. It was 20 minutes past 4 p.m. this Wednesday when Prime Minister Joseph John Gute's convoy crossed the Mongo Bridge and he officially set foot in the southwest. He was received at the foot of the bridge by Southwest Governor Bernard Okalia Bilai and a host of other administrative personalities. Despite the trauma which has gripped the population of the region since the brutal and cold-blooded killing of unarmed school children in Kumba, a cross-section of the population turned out to receive the Prime Minister, the PM's delegation then drove into the regional capital, Boya, where it spent the night before Thursday's event. Prime Minister Joseph John Gute is in the region to personally represent President Paul Bia at the official burial ceremony of the seven school children killed last October 24 while struggling to get an education. The participation of Prime Minister Joseph John Gute at tomorrow's funeral in Kumba is a continuation of efforts made by the government to console the parents of the victims as well as the population of the region following the shocking act. One of our top stories, the mayor of Yaoundé 7, Augustin Tamba, is the new president of the United Councils and Cities of Cameroon. He defeated his contender, Abubakar Abou of Belel, 198 votes as against 165 in an elective session presided over by the Minister of Decentralization and Local Development, Georges Elanga Obam. Kilian Dan Diffon reports on the highly contested poll, which went into the wee hours of the night. Augustin Tamba, the new president of the United Councils and Towns of Cameroon, is the mayor of Yaoundé 7 Council since 2013. He defeated Abubakar Abo with a score of 198 against 165. It is the victory of UCCC. I will meet my opponent so we could together direct our movement. Pour que nous puissions discuter sur la manière de conduire ensemble notre mouvement. Augustin Tamba and his team, who say democracy has thrived, among several promises, said they would make sure that the 15% of the state budget, which is meant for the decentralized entities, actually reached them. The elections which went on free, fair, and transparent, honestly shows that we are the worthy representatives of the people. The Minister of Decentralization and Local Development, George Elanga Oma, who opened and closed the fifth electoral general assembly of the UCCC, told the new team that they had the challenge to partner with public authorities to materialize the current decentralization process on the ground. Our newsroom dossier tonight features the cacophony that exists in a number of sectors due to administrative tolerance. There is no doubt that laws have been voted and promulgated, but many Cameroonians choose to defy legal instruments to the detriment of the social and economic fabric. Clarice Ari Takang reports that the disorder is rife in the communication, religious and security sectors, amongst others. In various domains, education, communication, health, microfinance, leisure structures, security outlets, and pay-to-use facilities in places which are expected to offer the said services free of charge. Churches, schools, health centers, radio and TV stations, as well as toilets in travel agencies or other public spaces to number these. Administrative tolerance has been held responsible for the laissez-faire attitude observed in the way many of these not only conducted their activities, but also in the ability to spread their influence. We discovered that most of those, some of the radios, they don't comply 
they search free frequencies and they anchor on them and they start operating. It is left for the ministry in charge of communication to be able to control. The Ministry of Territorial Administration is supposed to grant authorization for religious associations. The ministry has the power to control and ensure that the private security companies that are operating within the national territories are in possession of the license. Officials insist that abstaining voluntarily from repressing a violation of the law should by no means give the impression that the administration is inefficient. Quality control, repression, reforms, evaluation, consolidation, measures and administrative surveillance are part of the response strategy enforced in order to avoid a situation where tolerance breeds an outburst of intolerance. It is an obligation for citizens to abide by the laws of the land as well as international conventions their countries have adhered to. Failure to do this exposes them to sanctions as respect for state authority is a prerequisite for developments in every modern society. Joyce Kimbi Fuwaju reports. Shunning chaos and anarchy in a modern society like what is being observed in Cameroon largely depends on its compliance with existing standards and regulations. Compliance to regulations put in place by a state should be respected by all and sundry. A society without regulations uh, will be a chaotic society. To be effective, punitive measures are indispensable to call the population to order. In this case, punishment of defaulters should be indiscriminate and without favor. For the state to be respected, they must put in place regulations, and which regulations, of course, must be accompanied by sanctions. So if you do not comply with those regulations, then you know that the sanctions that go with it will be meted out on you. So what a modern society like Cameroon needs is a reinforcement of its punitive measures to boot out tolerance and illegality as regards the respect of standards and regulations. In other news, defamation, harassment and data theft constitute the threats users of Cameroon's cyberspace are exposed to. To check these vices and assure cyber security, ICT experts and other stakeholders are brainstorming in a three-day national forum on the theme National Cyberspace and Security Challenges. Yoti Kaleli Songa reports on the official opening presided over by the Post and Telecommunication boss, Minette Libom Lili King. No one knows it all. ICT experts at this forum say as it takes everyone's participation to keep Cameroon cyberspace secure. You have to collaborate with all the stakeholders if you want to fight successfully uh, this phenomenon. So what we need to do is to get involved, everybody. One of the themes highlighted here listed crimes such as defamation, data leaks and identity theft as the most recurrent threats on the internet. The main problem is that population uh, look like they are not enough aware of the danger of a cyberspace. We have joined a lot of experts to see how we can better elaborate operational strategies to fight against cyber criminality. The curtains have been rolled. With a break from brainstorming, the participants move to the various stands where some cybersecurity experts showcase their skills for an appraisal. The Social Dialogue Consultative and Follow-up Committee is pushing for a decent working environment for employees of both the formal and informal sectors. This is during the 26th and 27th sessions with focus on social peace in Cameroon, violence at work and the collaboration between administrative authorities and social partners. Yoti Kaleli Songe once again with the details. It's to the Social Dialogue Consultative and Follow-up Committee for making decent work a priority. In the first semester of this year, their negotiations with stakeholders of some enterprises helped prevent 37 strikes. 15 new trade unions have also been created. Our committee is an essential tool that has shown proof of its efficacy and that continues to work for everyone's interest with your respective contribution. This encounter centers on social peace, the most preoccupying issue being the relationship between officials and trade unions. The relationship between us right now is tense. Thus, a presentation on the collaboration between administrative authorities and social partners for the preservation of social peace. 
It highlights that such collaboration is important and has to be well understood by the different actors to create a balance sheet between the freedom of trade unions and challenges related to social public order. Meanwhile, the committee will continue with ongoing collective convention negotiations such that the demands are met. The accomplished diplomat and academician Maurice Kenye Kamiga, elected judge of the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, has been celebrated by the Banjin community in Yaoundé. Praised for nearly three decades of practice in international justice, his candidature endorsed by President Paul B. has been described as a diplomatic win by the president of the Banjin community in Yaoundé, Honorable Albert Quinche. Details in this report. A people proud to have as kinsman the judge of the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, Maurice Kenye Kamga, celebrate his achievements and his brilliant election. The 53-year-old expert in international law, with special emphasis on the delimitation of maritime boundaries, grabbed 157 of the 168 votes cast during last August poll. A diplomatic gain for Cameroon and Africa. It was an election championed by His Excellency Paul B. The result is a victory for Cameroon and Africa as I was the candidate supported by the African Union. The presidents of the Banjuns in Yaoundé, Honorable Albert Quinche, accompanied by friends and colleagues of the George, applaud his exceptional qualities and pray him well as he begins a nine-year mandate at the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea. Meantime, members of Parliament are working towards providing alternate solutions to waste disposal in order to create green jobs. At the annual General Assembly of the Parliamentary Network on Circular Economy, led by Honorable Geran Gala, the legislators outlined in the decentralization curtains as a remedy to environmental pollution. Details of the conclave at the National Assembly in this report. Settling on environmental sustainability and creating wealth through the effective management of waste are essential in the development of communities. Cognizant of this, the legislators advocate for the transformation and the proper disposal in landfills. We are going on an aggressive industrialization process in this country. We want to make great industry at the level of all councils so that they can be financially autonomous. With over 2 billion tons of waste found in Africa and only 4% recycled by the informal sector, Fostering circular economy is a siege in time that saves nine. Reducing, reusing and recycling of raw materials. Now the concept is all about relaxing pressure of products that are already existing in the environment. The Parliamentary Network for Circular Economy is poised to chaperone councils as they identify and seek financing to pilot projects that mutate end-of-life products. In Act 3 of our running series on comestibles, many Cameroonians are gradually engaging their offspring in the preparation of traditional dishes. It is a routine for most women to have the younger generation accompany them to understand how vital it is to master the recipes. Alice Bay reports that this is also practiced in restaurants. <laughs> Mama Martin, a restaurant owner in the Essos neighborhood of Yaoundé, says she is trying to get her children interested in traditional dishes. Traditional dishes are good for our health. I cook them locally. We should train our children on how to prepare our meals. It's good to know how to prepare our traditional dishes. I don't want to know more about those of the Western world because I will soon open my own restaurant. And my husband loves traditional dishes. Gone are those days when only local ingredients were used in cooking. Tastes have changed, so too have cooking techniques. I've got my son here to eat because he loves Ekpang, Evo and Achu. It is good to train our children our culture and traditional dishes than European dishes. While food remains an important item on the agenda of homes, the traditional way, many insist, is a way to eat. Children are being treated to projections today at the Ekranwa Film Festival in Yaoundé. Examples include a film on autism titled De Avril, 
kids black screens and broken which is scheduled for tonight emmanuel and vim news spotlights the attractions at the festival in this report a red carpet with a Cameroonian touch welcomes youngsters at the Ecran Noir Film Festival ground for kids' black screens. 2 Avril, a film on autism then goes live to demystify the illness. On the corridors and screening halls are cinema big guns. This year is one of the best years because actually Ecran Noir has created a platform for filmmakers to meet with uh, other filmmakers from uh, other countries. We have The Fisherman's Diary, Saving Bango, Broken, which will be airing tonight. Most of us are looking forward to seeing most of those films for the first time because we don't have cinemas. Grabbing a bite or quenching one's taste while striking new deals in cinema is possible. We have partners that have come in from France. We are looking forward to doing higher quality content. We have master classes that we are offering. I am working on something huge with uh, some um, collaborators from other countries. We are going to put Cameroon on the spotlight. The enthusiasm may still be low key, but the festival goes on. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice. Slightly above 750, partners who have contracted the coronavirus have the duty to respect barrier measures in order to keep their loved ones away from the virus. Gynecologists advise that although research is yet to prove that the virus is sexually transmissible, caution must be taken. Baldwin Sama and his guest, Dr. Robinson Boo, provide tips on this from the Public Health Emergency Operations Center. Hello, Baldwin. <laughs> Good evening to you, Esther Kima. I should say it remains a topic of uh, debate among most Cameroonians, especially uh, couples, as to whether or not the coronavirus uh, is uh, sexually transmissible. We discuss that tonight with our guest, Professor Robinson Boo, a gynecologist and director of Family Health in the Ministry of uh, Public Health. Good evening, Prof. Good evening, Baldwin. Medically speaking, is it uh, possible for the coronavirus to be transmitted sexually? Well, the coronavirus, like all other viruses, replicate within the cells of the body and within tissues. So it is possible for us to find viruses in human secretions. And so it is possible to find coronavirus in spermatic secretion. The fact that you can find uh, the coronavirus in spermatic fluid does not translate to mean that it is sexually transmitted. So it is possible to find the virus in seminal secretion that has been discovered and detected in some people who have been infected with coronavirus or have been treated from coronavirus. So it is possible, but it is not sexually transmitted. The people that uh, some samples were collected from them and traces of coronavirus found in their seminal fluid did not have sex before this collection were made. So there is no proof that coronavirus is sexually transmitted. And finally, Prof, what happens in a couple where one partner is a COVID-19 positive? What medical advice uh, can that couple receive from a gynecologist in order to avoid any contamination? Abstinence within two weeks of illness would not be a great deal for you to continue to make love. So when you're tested positive, it is better that you stay away from making love, and that will solve the whole problem. Thank you so much, Professor Robertson Boo, a gynecologist and director of Family Health in the Ministry of Public Health. The virus can be found in some secretions, but the coronavirus is not sexually transmissible. Back to you, Esther Kima. Thanks very much, Baldwin Summers. Sexually transmissible or not, when one partner is contracted with the virus, it is important to abstain from sexual intercourse. In other news, the concept of collective security in addressing the challenges of the African military has been defended in a doctorate thesis titled African Peace and Security Architecture. The candidate, Colonel Didier Bajek, examined the evolution and transformation of the African military in maintaining peace and security on the continent. Gerard Nanjiyambe reports. 
African peace and security architecture facing common threats is the focus of this doctorate thesis of ace military colonel didier bajek the candidate questions the inadequacy of the african defense and security policy there are too many problems it's necessary to all the the head of state to have another way of seeing what what's happening in africa it further suggests that the african military should not only be limited in maintaining peace but should be involved in the reconstruction and development of africa he was able to show that we need to move to a defense structure which is continent-wide a certain failures from the original status of peace and security so the, uh, the military can now go to reconstruction and development of africa the work which is divided into four chapters and the candidate a phd in political science with specialty in geopolitics in this advertorial 40 million CFA francs will be used for the construction of an integrated health center and a borehole at the research women sites of the Nguache disaster victims in the west region the funds have been provided by orange cameroon through its humanitarian organ orange foundation kelvin nimbo tells us more a win of change, a win of hope, blowing through the resettlement site of survivors of the Nguashe disaster thanks to Orange Cameroon. A foundation stone for the construction of an integrated health center for victims and a borehole is laid on the first anniversary of the incident that claimed the lives of over 40 Cameroonians. It was important that they have all their basic needs met. You can't resettle uh, a, um, a community and not give them access to health care, access to water, etc. So we came in with our contribution, which is to give them access to a health center, enabling them to... Uh, easily uh, take care of the health needs of their families. On the occasion, attended by traditional and municipal authorities, West Governor, accompanied by his close collaborators, praised Orange Cameroon for its countless efforts in supporting the Cameroonian government better the living standards of all citizens. We know Orange Cameroon to be that uh, enterprise that is always there to uh, work with government and give a helping hand to the needy. Orange Cameroon Foundation Secretary General said the number one mobile telephone operator is on all fronts with a common mission partner with the government to provide tailored solutions to all issues affecting Cameroonians from all walks of life. We've also um, uh, set up two digital women's digital centers. Digital schools have been equipped with tablets, uh, video projectors and um, educational content. The Orange Cameroon Foundation was established in 2009 and since then it has worked on basic education, health care for people with communication related disabilities, professional training and culture. Orange Cameroon is determined never to get tired. Out of Cameroon, Americans are yet to know the presidents for the next four years following yesterday's presidential election. The result tally is going on. The overdue weight is blamed on the huge voter turnout through mail-in voting, largely used because of the coronavirus. Charles Ebune reports. At the turn of this century, back in 2000, it looked like this, a long presidential election proclamation scenario. The Trump-Biden race looks like the bush argo match 20 years ago. Available partial results show the Democratic ticket leading with 238 electoral college votes as compared to 213 for the incumbent president, Donald Trump. Your patience is commendable. The traditional West Coast and East Coast big states like California and New York remained loyal to Democrats while Florida defended Donald Trump, but Republican stronghold Arizona went Democratic. At the Congress level, Democrats retained House majority and gained seats in the Senate. The complete electoral map will be drawn in the days ahead when battleground states like Wisconsin and Michigan publish their results to finally determine either a President Joe or Trump for the next four years. Notes the late technical advisor number two to the Minister of Communication and University Dawn, Professor Mabu Mabu, has been buried in his native Baham in the West region. The man, described as an intellect a unifier and God fearing, was posthumously decorated with the Medal of the National Order of Valo. Calvin Nembo reports.
Your heart is heavy, for a great man with a great heart has been snatched by death, leaving his wife, children, family relations, and friends in total despair. Difficult for his colleagues of the Ministry of Communication, where he served as technical advisor number two to the minister, those of the Advanced School of Mass Communication, where he was a lecturer. I remember he was so open. Professor Mabu was always ready to be able to hold your hand and guide you along the path. During a special church service to pray for the repose of the soul of the father of five, the officiating pastor enjoined mourners to constantly show love to their brethren as prescribed by God in the holy book. The fervent supporter of the CPDM party and nation builder as described by Honorable Tiedo Datu, who headed the CPDM delegation was posthumously decorated with the medal of the National Order of Valor by Upper Plateau SDO. Our main news was remembering November 4, 1982. It is 38 years today since President Amadou Aijo announced his resignation and handed over power to his constitutional successor, Paul Bia. More news will be coming up at 8.30 p.m. with Adam Bala. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Cut the links to into our programs on the CRT. Good night. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing 